know what's always nice is to talk about signs of a healthy relationship. I know that a lot of people will ask me, well, how do I even know if something's healthy? Or how will I know healthy when I see it? What do I do when all I've known is unhealthy relationships in my life? So let's talk about some signs of a healthy relationship. Okay, my name is Lise Colucci and I am here to help you understand and let's just talk about transforming your life today after toxic people and narcissists have been in it. So what is a healthy relationship? So you basically have your own individual life. You have the space to be who you are. Okay, you may have a life where you are cohabitating or not cohabitating or whatever. That's not what I'm talking about. What I mean is the space, the emotional space, the mental space, the spiritual space, the psychic space, whatever physical space to be a whole human being. In a healthy relationship, both people are able to speak their truth and be heard. It, may, it doesn't mean that you're agreed with all the time, right? But it means you, have, you feel heard in the relationship and you have room and consideration to be able to speak your truth. If you have an argument in a healthy relationship, it's an argument with purpose and there is a constructive way of going about it. There is listening, there is compromise, there is problem solving, understanding. It's fair, it's productive, and guess what? Both people apologize. Okay, if you're in a healthy relationship, you have a healthy relationship with yourself. You actually like yourself. You love yourself, okay? And so does the other person. To have a healthy relationship without that is very, very difficult because it does require having and knowing and trusting who you are as a person so that you can offer that to someone else. And if they have that same thing and they offer that back to the relationship, it can create a really healthy dynamic. So. That is why we focus on self-care and healing, right? Instead of just jumping back into something with someone else that may potentially be okay and having other people fix our lives, right? That doesn't work. A healthy relationship, joy is present. There is common laughter and, and pleasant, happy, joyful experiences. You're able to feel at home relaxed and joyful around that other person. Another thing present, is compromise and balance compromise as i said in arguments but also just in life like making allowances for the other person but having allowances made for you as well so it's not just a one-sided thing of somebody conforming their life to fit in someone else's life it's a balance of of both people working together to create a life together that offers compromise on both sides there is ever present kindness, okay? Even when things are difficult, even when we're angry, even when you're frustrated, even when you're bored, there's kindness. Don't you, it, it's not an expectation of happily ever after, okay? It is not an expectation of always this gushing love coming forward and whatever, but always respect, always kindness. Yes, that is possible to have that present. And this is a challenging one. So in a healthy relationship, there's trust, you guys. There's trust. And I get it. When you are a survivor of narcissism and toxic people, trust is a challenging thing. So this may be an area that you in particular need to tippy toe into or need to, you know, work with someone. You know, as you're working through this, if you are entering into a relationship, this can be a great time to revisit coaching or to be in coaching so that you can make sure these things are, these boxes are being checked, but also so that you can be the healthiest person you can be and work through the little areas that you might feel stuck because of your past, because of the traumatic things that have happened from other people. All right. And I know when I'm talking to people who have been through toxic relationships and they're in coaching and it gets to this point where in their life they're having to have relationships where trust is needed now. There's a whole lot of interesting stuff that comes up that have formed beliefs in, in, in your mind about yourself that sometimes this can be a breakthrough point of healing for you. So I mentioned coaching before. If you need coaching, group coaching, or peer support, check out the information in every video. It's on the main description, okay? And leave me a comment. Let me know what you're thinking, what kind of videos you'd like to see on here, okay? So when you're in a healthy relationship, it's two people 
continually working to make themselves healthy people and then presenting the healthy person that they are back to the relationship. Does that make sense? So in healthy relationships, grudges are not held. There's no tit for tat. There's no bringing up the past and dredging up your past transgressions or the issues that you've had in the relationship. I mean, unless there's a major thing that happens that needs to be revisited because it feels like it's going that direction again, it's not brought up. Things are left in the past because they've been resolved. Here's the thing, they've been resolved. They've been discussed. They've been worked on together. So you guys, I'm just gonna take a second here to say hit the thumbs up and hit subscribe. There's shared intimacy and vulnerability when you're in a healthy relationship. And that's kind of across the entire relationship, not just one form of intimacy. There is affection in the way you look at one another, in the way that the touch happens, in the way you consider the other person, in the tones of voices that are used, that is present in healthy relationships. Okay, and here's one that it may not feel safe right away, but when things are healthy and when both people are have a healthy attachment to one another, there is safety. Now, this is tricky because when you've been with a narcissistic person, your version of safety is a little um, is a little twisted up in your head, most likely, because what has been safe to you is toxic. So it's a different kind of safety. If two people have never had a toxic relationship, there's safety between them. Okay, so for us who have coming from toxic relationships, we have to remember that this one can also be a red flag. We have to pay attention to what that safety means. And here's what I mean by it when I'm talking about a healthy relationship. There's not a lot of anxiety in the dynamic, okay? You may have your own personal anxiety, but the dynamic between you and that person, there's not a lot of anxiety. They haven't gaslit you over and over again. They aren't presenting you with red flags that you're ignoring, right? So things like that. As you learn about yourself, you start to see what is and what isn't safe for you. Decisions are shared, values are shared, time is discussed, things are discussed, things aren't just one-sided in a healthy relationship. You are striving to understand one another in healthy relationships. You're striving to find a common ground or at least understand that other person's point of view, recognizing that it is their point of view and that you don't need to enmesh with it and have either the same point of view or else, right? And you don't need to try and change their point of view. You're encouraging to one another, the time you share is valued and you respect one another's differences. So there are some of the ways you can tell if a relationship is healthy and what healthy relationships kind of kind of be modeled after and look like, all right? And I know this is, for some people, this feels like a foreign land, never had this, don't know what this is. I'm just putting this out here because people often ask, what does it even look like? I have no idea, I wouldn't know it if I saw one, okay? So we'll come back next time and we'll talk more. I will see you guys next time. Take care, bye-bye.